Picture the San Francisco of the late 1940s. Here in the rough and tumble Potrero Hill Projects, a young boy named Orenthal James Simpson begins his journey. Born into a world of struggle and hardship, OJ, as he would come to be known, was a beacon of potential in an environment that often extinguished such light. Life in the projects was tough, but OJ was tougher. His indomitable spirit, combined with a natural talent for athletics, set him apart from his peers. At Galileo High School, his prowess on the football field began to shine, his name becoming synonymous with victory. It wasn't long before his talents caught the attention of the University of Southern California. During his years at USC, OJ wasn't just an athlete. He was a phenomenon. He broke records, collected accolades, and swiftly ascended to the national spotlight. His future seemed as bright as his smile, his potential as vast as the California skies. Yet beneath the charm and the triumphs, there were undercurrents of trouble. Even in these early days, the complexities of OJ's character were beginning to surface. His unyielding drive to succeed, while admirable, hinted at a darker side. There were whispers of a temper, rumors of fights, early signs of the volatility that would later define his public image. But for now, OJ was a rising star. His athletic prowess won him a place in the hearts of millions. His charismatic personality making him a media darling. He was more than a football player. He was a symbol of the American dream, a testament to the belief that anyone, no matter their background, could rise to greatness. Yet, even as OJ stood on the brink of stardom, shadows of trouble loomed on the horizon. The same drive that propelled him to the top was also pushing him towards a precipice, a fall from grace that would shock the nation and redefine his legacy. The rise of a hero was underway, but so too was the setting of a sun. In the midst of his rising fame, OJ Simpson married Marguerite Whitley. Their union, blossoming in the late 60s, bore the weight of three children and the spotlight of OJ's burgeoning career. As Simpson's star ascended, his, chi his marriage faced a mounting strain. The pressures of public life, coupled with the demands of his career, sowed discord in their relationship. Marguerite found herself living in the shadow of O.J.'s fame, contending with his frequent absences and the persistent rumors of his infidelity. The marriage, once a haven for the couple, was now a stage for their unraveling relationship. Despite their attempts to reconcile, the couple eventually succumbed to the strain, their relationship ending in divorce in the year 1979. As the public celebrated OJ's victories, his personal life was quietly disintegrating. In the glow of his celebrity, OJ met Nicole Brown. She was a radiant young woman, just 18 at the time, working as a waitress at a private club in Beverly Hills. The two hit it off immediately, their connection as magnetic as it was, instant. The world watched as OJ, fresh off his first divorce, embarked on a new journey of love and companionship. Their relationship was a whirlwind of charm and extravagance. From lavish parties to glitzy red carpet events, OJ and Nicole were the embodiment of the American dream. They tied the knot in 1985, welcoming the birth of their daughter, Sydney, and later their son, Justin. Yet, as the public watched this fairy tale unfold, they were oblivious to the tempest brewing beneath the surface. Accusations of domestic abuse began to surface, casting a dark shadow over their glamorous life. Police were called to their residence multiple times, with Nicole alleging physical abuse. These incidents, however, were often shrouded in secrecy, hidden away from the prying eyes of the public. But as the frequency of these altercations increased, so did their visibility. By 1992, the facade of their perfect life had crumbled completely. Nicole filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences. The split was public and painful, with allegations of abuse becoming front-page news. OJ's reputation took a hit, but the worst was yet to come. 
Little did anyone know, the narrative was about to take a tragic and horrifying turn. Behind the glamour and charm, a darker narrative was unfolding. This was not just the story of a celebrated hero's fall from grace, but also a stark reminder of the often hidden realities of domestic abuse. As we delve further into the life and trials of O.J. Simpson, we are confronted with the complexities of his character and the chilling events that would forever tarnish his legacy. On a quiet June night in 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman were brutally murdered. In the leafy neighborhood of Brentwood, Los Angeles, a shocking discovery was made. The bodies of Nicole Brown Simpson, OJ's ex-wife, and her friend Ron Goldman were found in a pool of blood, victims of a horrifyingly violent crime. The brutality of the murders sent shockwaves rippling across the nation, casting a dark shadow over the sunny illusion of Southern California. The news broke like a thunderclap, reverberating through every corner of the country. The public, once enamored with the charismatic sportsman and actor, was left reeling. The golden boy of American football, the charismatic media personality, was now under the microscope in the most gruesome of circumstances. Almost immediately, suspicion fell on O.J. Simpson. The evidence, circumstantial though it was, pointed in his direction. A bloody glove found at the crime scene matched one discovered at his home. His relationship with Nicole marred by allegations of domestic violence, was dragged into the spotlight. His image, once gleaming, was now tarnished with the specter of these brutal crimes. Yet, for many, the thought of O.J. Simpson as a cold-blooded killer was unthinkable. He was an American hero, a man who had broken barriers and shattered records. Could the same man who dazzled on the football field and charmed in front of the cameras really be capable of such a heinous act? The question hung in the air, a chilling reminder of the duality of human nature. As the investigation unfolded, the media descended, turning the case into a spectacle. Every development was scrutinized, every detail dissected. The man who was once cheered on the football field was now being watched by millions, not from the stands, but from their living rooms. The line between hero and villain blurred as the nation grappled with the horrifying possibility of Simpson's guilt. America watched aghast as one of their heroes became a prime suspect. The unthinkable had happened, and the story was only just beginning. As we delve deeper into this tale, remember that even the brightest stars can fall, and when they do, the impact is felt far and wide. Ta Days after the brutal murders, America was riveted by the image of O.J. Simpson fleeing in a white Ford Bronco. The country's collective breath hitched as the Bronco weaved its way through Los Angeles's highways, trailed by a phalanx of police cars. This was no high-speed pursuit. It was a slow, agonizing crawl that seemed to mirror the nation's disbelief. The man once hailed as a hero, an icon of athletic prowess and charm, was now at the center of a macabre spectacle. The chase was a surreal tableau that held millions captive, their eyes unblinking in front of their televisions. It was as if the world had slipped into an alternate reality where heroes could fall from grace. And the golden boy of American sports was now cast in the harsh light of suspicion. A hero was now a fugitive, and the nation watched in disbelief. This chase marked a profound shift, a moment of collective disillusionment that would forever alter the nation's perception of O.J. Simpson. The, the trial that followed was more than just a legal proceeding, it was a cultural spectacle. The courtroom was transformed into a stage where the drama of O.J. Simpson's life unfolded. Key players took their positions, their actions and words scrutinized by millions across the globe. On the defense, we had Johnny Cochran, a lawyer known for his charisma and courtroom theatrics. His famous phrase, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit, referring to the infamous glove, still echoes in the annals of legal history. 
alongside Cochran, Robert Shapiro, a seasoned defense attorney, added his own brand of legal expertise to the mix. On the prosecution, Marcia Clark, a determined and skilled prosecutor, battled not just the defense, but also public opinion and media bias. Her fierce pursuit of justice, however, was often overshadowed by the public's fixation on her personal life and appearance. The trial was a melting pot of dramatic revelations and intense scrutiny. The infamous glove, the blood-stained socks, and the white bronco chase, all these elements formed a narrative that was both horrifying and fascinating. Yet the trial was more than just the sum of its evidence. It was a reflection of the times, the racial tension that gripped the nation. The specter of Rodney King's brutal beating by the LAPD loomed large, casting a shadow of racial bias and police misconduct over the proceedings. The verdict when it came was as divisive as the trial itself. The jury's decision to acquit Simpson was met with a mix of shock and relief, depending on who you asked. The verdict divided the nation, leaving a legacy of controversy. The O.J. Simpson trial was the trial of the century, not just for its high-profile defendant, but for the way it held up a mirror to society. It highlighted the power of fame, the influence of media, and the deep-seated racial tensions that still exist to this day. The verdict divided the nation, leaving a legacy of controversy. But be ended this even, um, but mom, even after the trial, the saga of O.J. Simpson continued. The spotlight never quite dimmed, the whispers never completely hushed. The scars of the past refused to fade, and new wounds were soon to be inflicted. In the wake of the criminal trial, the Goldman family sought justice through a different avenue. They filed a civil suit against Simpson, alleging wrongful death. This time, the scales of justice tipped in their favor. The civil court found Simpson liable for the deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, ordering him to pay a substantial sum in damages. It was a verdict that felt like a rebuke to his criminal trial acquittal, a stark contrast that left many questioning the justice system. But the saga did not end there. In 2007, a decade after the civil trial, Simpson plunged the public back into the depths of the past with the publication of his book, If I Did It. The book, presented as a hypothetical confession, was a chilling exploration of his enigmatic psyche. The supposed what-if scenario of the murders sparked outrage and renewed debates about his innocence or guilt. The controversy surrounding the book's release was a stark reminder of the unresolved tensions and unanswered questions that still haunted the nation. As the dust settled, the public was left grappling with a figure who had fallen from grace. The man once celebrated as a hero was now a pariah, his legacy tarnished by scandal, suspicion, and tragedy. The tale of O.J. Simpson from his rise to his fall serves as a somber warning of the destructive power of fame and the chilling depths of human darkness that can lurk behind the most charismatic of smiles. As we reflect on the twisted path of O.J. Simpson, we must also remember Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. Their lives abruptly and violently ended remind us of the human cost of this saga. Nicole, a vibrant woman with a love for life, and Ron, a young man with dreams and ambitions, they were more than just victims in this macabre tale. They were individuals whose futures were stolen away. Nicole, a mother of two, was known for her vivacious spirit and kindness. She was a woman who loved unconditionally, even in the face of adversity. Ron, on the other hand, was a spirited young man, ambitious and full of potential. He was known for his warm smile and willingness to help others. Their loss is a poignant reminder of the lives that were tragically cut short. But what does this story tell us about fame? The rise and fall of O.J. Simpson lays bare the thin line between fame and infamy. A stellar athlete, 
a charismatic personality, a celebrated hero, yet a man who became a national pariah. His journey serves as a chilling reminder of the complexities of the human condition. Fame, as Simpson's story illustrates, can be a double-edged sword. It can elevate individuals to dizzying heights, yet it can also expose the deepest flaws. It can create an illusion of invincibility, and yet it can also be a stage for public downfall. The public's fascination with Simpson, both during his rise and his fall, underscores our collective obsession with celebrity culture and the narratives we weave around our heroes. The O.J. Simpson saga also lays bare the power of public opinion. The court of public opinion often operates independently of the legal system, delivering its own set of verdicts. Simpson's acquittal in the criminal trial did not absolve him in the eyes of many. His subsequent conviction in the civil trial further fueled public outrage and cemented his fall from grace. And yet, even as we reflect on these grim realities, we must also remember the resilience of the human spirit. The families of Nicole and Ron, despite their unimaginable loss, have shown remarkable courage and determination. They have sought justice, preserved the memories of their loved ones, and continued to advocate for victims of domestic violence. In the shadows of the spotlight, we find a chilling reminder of the complexities of the human condition. The story of O.J. Simpson is a stark illustration of how fame and infamy can be two sides of the same coin. It's a tale that raises questions about our societal values, our fascination with celebrity culture, and the narratives we construct around our heroes. Until next time, stay curious. Keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep seeking answers. Because in the quest for truth, we often uncover the most intriguing stories.